You know, uh, one of our best-selling <clears throat> songs in the United States in the country and western field is by Reba McIntyre. It's called uh, The Greatest Man I Never Knew. <laughs> and it's about her father. And in my work, if you'd see how many people have had fathers that they wanted a closer connection with. But I've also worked with the fathers, and I know what hell it is to be locked into that form of communication. Because they have the feeling, but they haven't had the cultural experience or training to get in touch with them. And that's a very lonely experience to be inside there and not to have access to be able to do that. So that's why we need a courageous giraffe to be able to make the request to begin with in a giraffe way and then not to hear attacks when the person says, quit badgering me. And this is not how real people communicate. Now we just hear the feelings in that because we know that this person will probably want it when they understand what it's all about. A man who showed a lot of courage invited his father to a three-day business workshop that I did in uh, Zurich, Switzerland. And uh, at the third day, this son uh, said, Marshall, would you mind if I did some work with my father in front of the group? Well, I'd had lunch one day with his father, and I didn't think his father would be too comfortable with that. So I said, well, let me talk to him about it. So I said to the father, your son has said he'd like to do some communication in giraffe with you up in front of the group. Would you be willing to do that? It didn't look happy to him when I said that. He seemed very nervous about this. So we talked for a few moments, and I said, how about this? How about if I play your role, and you just have to sit there and coach me? He agreed to that. So now we're up in front of the group. The father is sitting here. I'm here playing the father's role. And then there's the son. And boy, for a public workshop of the kind that this was, this son took a big risk because he opened up and said, Dad, my whole life I have really wanted a closer connection with you. And I'm, I'm afraid that we're never going to develop it. And I want that more than anything in the world. And it's frustrating that I don't know how to bring it about. And like, it's really scary for me to have said that just now. I'd like you to tell me how you feel. And so I respond as the father and say, Well, David, when, you, when I see how much you want this, I feel very touched and very moved because I want the same thing. But I am scared to death because I don't know how to do it. And I'm also afraid that I'm not going to be able to do it well enough and you'll get impatient and give up on me. And how do you feel when I say that? And now the son gets tears in his eyes and said, Dad, just this much is what I've wanted my whole life. So we had a couple more very powerful interchanges, and I turned to the father, and I said, how am I doing in your role? Good. <laughs> Real good. So then the audience started to speak up and uh, they, they admired the young man for taking the risk to bring his father and to open up that way. They really admired the courage that he showed. I admire it too. But the son unfortunately couldn't hear it because there was so much noise in the room. So I waited for it to calm down. I said, David, did you hear what your father said just now? Did you say something, Dad? What was it? I said, I heard him say, I admire you for doing it too. Did you say that, Dad? And then the two got up and embraced. And I've never seen a more beautiful sight than the mother's face who was sitting in the front row, because she also came. She had wanted that, she said, more than anything in the world for 40 years, to see the two of them be able to connect in that way.